If we look at the charts, the charts are still negative, right? I mean, there's no denying this, all right? You have a bear flag right here underneath this resistance line right here, all right? And any sort of downside move, we actually will have a small stopping point around 24,800, but really the big level is going to be in the 23,000 range. So 23,000 to 24,000. That's going to be your buy level for a bounce. Now, do I think that's the bottom? No. As of now, I'm undetermined. I still think we could go to new lows. Popular technical analyst and veteran swing trader Gareth Soloway has maintained a largely bearish outlook on the cryptocurrency industry for about 18 months. In 2021, Soloway said the leading cryptocurrency was overbought and due for a massive correction. The following year, as various macro and geopolitical events, as well as industry-related collapses, impacted prices further, Soloway stuck with his bearish outlook and continued to caution investors about getting too excited about the crypto industry in the short term. It's 2023 and Soloway is still pretty much bearish on cryptocurrencies. This time, the technical analyst blames the continued interference by U.S. regulators for the industry's stifled sideways growth and recent price movements. According to Soloway, there are lots of signs that we are very much still in a crypto bear market and the United States government is intentionally keeping prices down by withholding suitable regulation for the cryptocurrency industry. One of those signs, Soloway explains, is the low attendance at this year's Bitcoin Miami conference. Last year, the conference, which prides itself as the largest gathering of Bitcoin lovers, had 35,000 people in attendance. This year's conference only attracted about 15,000 people. While many people blame crypto winter for the low attendance, Soloway blames the current state of the U.S. economy and dwindling interest in the cryptocurrency industry because of the regulatory crackdown and the government's refusal to provide much-needed clarity for the industry. And Soloway does believe the refusal is deliberate. According to the popular technical analyst, the United States government is using China's playbook. Soloway believes the U.S. government plans to stifle the industry's growth until it launches its central bank digital currency, which uses the same underlying technology as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but with the added advantage that it can be easily manipulated and controlled by the government. Until these issues are resolved or properly ironed out, Soloway is certain that the cryptocurrency industry will not be able to move into the next phase of its development and adoption. He discusses all these and more during last week's edition of his weekly game plan broadcast. Please watch the video to the end as we bring you some important clips from the broadcast. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Thanks and enjoy the video. I was bearish on Bitcoin before. I'm actually more bearish now, and I'm going to explain why. So number one, I've been talking about, first of all, let's go back about three, four weeks. When we were at 30,500, I came on this, this stream, I came on the game plan, and I said, guys, Unless you get above this and hold above 30,500, this is a dead short. This is a bear market rally. All right. What happened? We pulled back. We pulled back to this level on the charts right here. We then bounced. We pulled back. We bounced. We then broke and look at the bear flag we're making. Now, this is my problem. There's a couple things that I want to mention about Bitcoin. Number one. All right. I went to Bitcoin Miami. Attendance was down 43% at Bitcoin Miami. All right, this is one of the biggest events of the year for Bitcoin and crypto, and attendance was almost half of what it was the previous year. Now, is it partially that we're in a bear market? Well, maybe, but if you look back at when Bitcoin Miami was last year, price was only around 30,000 last year. So we were already well in a bear market, but there was, again, a huge amount of people. So it, you can't really blame it on the bear market. So the next thing that you would do is say, okay, well, is it the economy? And the answer is yes, it's probably partially the economy. Money is tighter for people. Inflation has taken a bite out of their disposable income. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that could be a factor. But I also think one of the un unthought of factors is that there's not as much excitement in crypto. And that's an issue. Crypto needs to have the excitement level. Now, if you go in, in, in our bubbles, the Twitter bubble, the Instagram bubble, you, of course you're gonna have excitement, right? I mean, you're, you're going to a specific area. But the fact that the government is holding back regulation is very, very problematic. And to me, that's a negative. There are so many Bitcoiners out there that are these maxis. And they're like, but Bitcoin rallied 100% off of the lows. Like, it has to be a new bull market. And I'm like, dude, stop being doofuses. Like, think back in 2018. Bitcoin rallied 200% off of the lows and then still went back to the lows of 3,500. So you have to look at history. I know, trust me, I know there's this like, oh, I just wish, oh, I hope I can make a zillion dollars. But you know what you're going to do? You're doing yourself a disservice by not looking at facts, not being logical, not being strong in the mind and disciplined. You're actually going to cost yourself money. 
Now, again, is it saying that we couldn't have a bottom at 15,700? No, of course you could. Of course you could. But let the charts guide you. The 30,500 level is a level that I went on and I said, this is the Great Wall of China level. This is like the level where, you know, this is the end all be all level. And we didn't get through it. So you have to, what's that telling us? I mean, just simply put, what's that telling us? So understand that, guys. You got to understand that. The other thing I'll say on Bitcoin that I don't like about crypto right now is that crypto has no identity. It, it lost any form of identity over the last couple months. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. The banking crisis hit. We saw banks collapsing. SV, SVB collapsed, Silicon Valley Bank. Um, and what did Bitcoin do? It shot up. Well, guess what? A month later, Bitcoin, some banks collapsed again. All right, we saw WAL, Western Alliance, dropping 50%. PacWest dropping like 75%. Bitcoin went down. So Bitcoin goes up when some of the banks collapse, but then when others collapse, it goes down. Hmm. Well, that's not an identity. It's not telling us something. Okay, well, let's take another one. Let's talk about how Bitcoin right now, markets go up some days and Bitcoin goes up. Other days, markets go up and Bitcoin goes down. All right, well, now you got to say to yourself, wait, so is it a risk asset or is it a safety hedge? Is it the digital gold or is it a risk on play? And it's going up and down on both of them. There's no identity here. One event that seems to have given crypto an identity over the past two days is the debt ceiling deal between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. According to reports, Biden and McCarthy reached an agreement in principle during a phone call on Saturday to raise the debt ceiling for two years in cap spending. If approved, the two-year deal would allow the federal government to borrow money until well after the November 2024 federal election. Voting on the bill is expected to start later this week. On Sunday, after Biden and McCarthy confirmed the deal, Bitcoin prices gained almost $2,000, surging to $28,432, its highest price in two weeks. Though the leading crypto asset is now back below $28,000, this deal could further positively impact prices, especially when investors realize that suspending setting a debt limit for another two years gives the government another chance to turn on the printers. According to renowned economist and gold bug Peter Schiff, the deal which allows rises in several budget areas without supervision could increase the U.S. national debt by at least $4 trillion in the next two years. If this is not an incentive to own Bitcoin, nothing else it is. Let's get back to Soloway's game plan broadcast as he discusses the U.S. government's plan to bring the cryptocurrency industry under its control. Now, I do think longer term, and let's be clear, longer term, I'm a big fan of the bull case. I think it does grow into its identity. I think it is the digital gold. But you know what's happening right now, guys? The government is stifling it. And they're doing it on purpose. I want to be 100% crystal clear. All right, look up this. All right, so we, we obviously know, and, and I'm going to just repeat this. I've said this before, but this is one of the most important things you'll hear on crypto, and it's fascinating. All right, so basically what you have in this situation is the government is doing a China play, playbook. And what I mean by that is China, remember, China came out and banned Bitcoin. After they banned Bitcoin, what did they do? They released the digital yuan. Why did they do that? Well, they didn't want competition for the digital yuan. They wanted the digital yuan to gain traction in their economy, and therefore, it's, it doesn't. Then, once the big players are using the digital yuan, Bitcoin is not as much of a threat. Well, guess what's happened? Now they're starting to loosen the, that regulatory control and that ban on Bitcoin because the digital yuan has, has the power. It's now embedded in the Chinese economy. Well, take it to the US now. The US is saying, yeah, well, you know, and, and by the way, anyone who thinks that the Ripple decision isn't already made is like ludicrous. You think a judge really needs to sit for a year and think about things? I mean, really? I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. So what that means is the government is saying, don't release this, this view. Don't release your decision. And also, we're not going to give regulation. By the way, Coinbase is suing them for regulation, you know, you know, so they can figure it out. They're threatening to leave the country. We've already seen, you know, exchanges leave Canada because of this. But basically, look up FedNow. FedNow is a direct payment system that's going to be launching in literally weeks, I believe. And again, you can literally, it'll basically be a Cash App equivalent or a Venmo equivalent. And it's the beginning of the introduction of the CBDC. And the idea here is very simple. It's the government is not releasing regulation because once regulation comes out, check this out, once regulation comes out, 
then the institutions will get involved. Once the institutions put billions and trillions of dollars into crypto, you can't undo that. So as long as they don't release this information, you know what's going to happen? Then the big money sitting on the sidelines, heck, I'm not even willing to invest that much without knowing the rules in crypto. And they're waiting for FedNow to launch, the CBD to launch, the CBDC to launch. And then once that occurs, then you will get regulation. I would almost guarantee within weeks of this occurring, you will get regulatory framework in crypto. And by the way, one other thing, going to politicians, and I'm not a political dude right here. I mean, I just want to say this, but if you look at, I was at Bitcoin Miami, we had a presidential candidate speaking there. You know, uh, there was a presidential candidate yesterday on, on um, Twitter that announced, they're all trying to be like, oh, I'm pro Bitcoin, I'm pro Bitcoin. Okay, I like that. I'm a fan of that, good. But you know what? Maybe me, I'm just cynical, but I want to see if they get elected, if they still are. And I think it's, it's a one way to guarantee votes, and they know that. I want to know that when they get elected, if they get elected, they're still behind it. And that's my skepticism. So again, yes, it's great to hear. Let's see how it goes. If anything, the debt ceiling deal after weeks of pointless politicking shows that politicians and policymakers will always have one more tool in their toolbox. For policymakers in the United States, that tool, however sweetly and innocently they may present it, is always adding to the nation's already massive debts. When they strike deals like this, suspending important, albeit difficult, decisions to benefit their own political agendas, one can only ask for how long will investors remain blindly loyal to the failing economy and traditional finance sector. Certainly, deals like this will only make the day of reckoning come much faster. What are your thoughts on Soloway's assessment of the cryptocurrency industry and the debt ceiling deal? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, be sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.